welcome back. And today we're gonna to do something just a little bit different. Uh, normally, whenever I buy vacuum tubes, I don't buy a specific tube, uh, unless it's the 6AU6. I, I bought thousands of those. <laughs> because it's like my all-time favorite too. But usually I just buy a large lot of unknown or unmarked tubes. And while the joy of digging through to look for any gems is just massive amounts of fun, and you almost always find something really special in those lots. And in the most recent purchase that I had, I came across these two gems right here. Now, the glass shape is quite different, but actually these two tubes are extremely similar. I mean, they both have a large anode cap and they both have four pin bases, uh, but they're both gas filled half wave rectifiers. This one is a 3B25 and it's filled with a xenon gas. And this is an 866A and it's filled with mercury vapor. As a matter of fact, I can actually see the little droplets of mercury stuck to the side of the glass. <laughs> it's really cool looking. Uh, but what makes these really special is that, well, yes, they do the same job and they operate under pretty much the exact same principles, but whenever you power them up, they glow a very, very cool color. Uh, so that's what I wanna to do today. I wanna to take a look at uh, what exactly is a mercury vapor rectifier or a gas filled rectifier in general. And I wanna put some power into both of these and take a look at the colors that they emit when they are doing their job and maybe we can actually see the, them doing their job of rectification. So I think it's gonna be really cool to power these up and uh, take a look at them. So let's hop over to the bench and get started. So what is a mercury vapor rectifier? Well, it's in the name actually, it's just a, a rectifier. And a rectifier is just a diode. Uh, and it works almost identically to a regular directly heated vacuum tube diode. So we have a, a filament at the bottom here, and then we have a high voltage power supply and we put a strong positive on the anode and we put the ground on the cathode. And this power supply essentially borrows the filament to boil off electrons. And then those electrons are attracted to the strong positive voltage that's sitting on the anode. So they fly across the tube and collect on the anode. Now, if we flip that around and we put the strong positive voltage on the cathode and the negative voltage on the anode, well, there's no heat on the anode, so the electrons can't boil off, and so current doesn't flow through the tube. And this is exactly how a diode works. You have electrons flowing from cathode to anode, but no electrons flowing from anode to cathode. It's just a one-way street. Now, the reason that they're calling this a uh, rectifier instead of just a diode is because, well, its primary job was to rectify AC into DC. Whenever we have the positive half of that sine wave on the anode, electrons are gonna boil off of the cathode and flow through to the anode, so we get a circuit that way. But as soon as that sine wave comes below zero, and we're now having a strong negative value on the anode and a positive value on the cathode, the electrons aren't boiling off, and so there is no way for the electrons to flow, and so this is taking that negative component of our sine wave and just slicing it off. So we're rectifying our AC into very bumpy DC. This is very common of pretty much any vacuum tube rectifier, but what makes this one really unique is the fact that it has mercury vapor inside of it. Now, if you look closely inside of the tube, you can actually see the mercury in little droplets. Uh, so the actual tube has to get hot enough to uh, essentially change that mercury to being in a gas form. Uh, and then when it is, we have something that's actually kind of a similar idea to other gas-filled tubes, whether it be argon, xenon, or in this case, mercury. And essentially what's happening is as those electrons are flowing from the cathode to the anode, they're striking the mercury vapor and causing it to get excited. And then it goes into something that I think is called Townsend Discharge. It's kind of like an avalanche. 
in that one particle of mercury vapor gets excited and throws off some electrons that bounce into other particles of mercury vapor, they get excited and throw off more particles, and it just cascades until you have essentially a conduit of plasma connecting the anode to the cathode. And then the electrons have a much lower resistance path to travel from one to the other, which means that it can handle a lot more current. And that's what makes these uh, mercury rectifiers really special is that they can handle a lot more current than a standard vacuum tube rectifier. Uh, of course, I say that's what makes them special. What really makes them special is that whenever that gas gets excited and turns into plasma, it glows. So let's put some power into these and see what they look like when they're glowing. All right, we'll start with the 866A here. Uh, and you can actually see the anode extremely clearly. It's just this uh, perpendicular piece right at the top. And then the filament is encased in this shield around it. And I think the purpose of that shield is to help direct the flow of plasma up to the plate. Now, I don't actually know if this tube is gonna work. There is some broken glass right up here at the top, but the uh, glass to metal seal does still seem to be okay. Uh, so there's really only one way to find out, and that is to, well, power it up and test it out. Now to test it out, I'm going to use my big Tektronix uh, transformer back here. We have a lot of interesting voltages on it, but unfortunately we don't have the voltage that's necessary for the filament. The filament is two and a half volts at five amps. Uh, and I don't have a two and a half volt winding on here, but I do have a 6.3 volt winding at seven amps. So I'm just taking a uh, little 0 0.8 ohm resistor on an old CPU heat sink here, cause it's gonna get hot. Uh, and that's acting as a dropper resistor for our filament to get it to close to the right voltage. Now coming into the anode, I have 113 volts off of the uh, 113 volt winding from the Tektronix transformer there. And then off of one leg of the filament, which is our cathode, we come out and we go to this uh, 2200 ohm uh, power resistor over here. This is only a 10 watt resistor and I think there's gonna be about 13 or 14 watts going through it. So we won't run it for too long cause it's probably gonna get a little warm as well. And then that goes back to our transformer. Uh, and that should put enough of a load onto it that we can see it do its thing. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to disconnect the uh, high voltage and just let it warm up. And when it's warming up without any high voltage anywhere on it, that's gonna prevent us from stripping the cathode, but we should also see some interesting stuff happen with the mercury, because we should be able to see it turn into a vapor. So let's flip the power on and we'll see how the glass changes as this tube starts to warm up and get fully up to temperature. Oh yeah, I can see it changing. You can see there's kind of a reflective sheen now sticking to the side of the glass. It's getting hot in there and turning all of that mercury into vapor. Look at that, the mercury vapor is now so reflective, you can very clearly see me in the reflection of the mercury. Hi guys, you can see the camera as well. Uh, that is just really cool. Uh, but now this means that the tube is fully warmed up and we're ready to put high voltage into the anode, uh, but I'm gonna flip it off before I go touching things. Uh, and let's put some high voltage into it and we should hopefully be able to see the cool glow of that uh, mercury ionizing. And I'm gonna flip the lights off so we can get a better look at it. All right, here goes nothing. Let's flip the power on and see what happens. Oh yeah, I can see it glowing. Oh, <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> Wow, what a beautiful color. You can actually see the plasma coming out of the shield and spreading out and contacting the anode. That is the plasma conduit between the cathode and the anode. How beautiful is that? <laughs> All right, next let's take a look at the 3B25. It has almost an identical arrangement, uh, two and a half volt, five amp filament. And you can see a very large anode right up here at the top. So let's flip it on and see what it looks like. 
Oh, there it goes. Ooh, this one had a much different color. It's a much deeper purple color, but it is also really beautiful. And just like before, you can see how the shield is directing the flow of plasma directly up to that plate, to that anode. That is just super cool. All right, next I wanna see if I can actually see the rectification that's going on. Uh, so I've busted out my big HP 150A scope here, and essentially I've taken our setup that we were using just to test it, and I've just put the scope across the load resistor here, uh, and we should be able to see the bottom half of the AC sine wave being cut off, being rectified. Uh, it's set up at 50 volts per division, so let's uh, kick it on and see what happens. Oh, there we go. Check that out. Oh man, that's so cool. Our uh, vertical position is a little off center here. So if I bring it up to the center right there, uh, yeah, you can see it has cut the bottom half of our sine wave off absolutely perfectly. And at 50 volts per division, it looks like we've got 50, 100, and about maybe 120 volts. It should be the 113 volt winding, but we don't have a whole lot of load on it, so that actually looks just about perfect. Uh, we'll change the uh, sweep time here, and we can see a much smoother look at that sine wave and how it just slices it off perfectly at zero volts. That is super cool. So next we will uh, go ahead and flip the power off and then we will pull this 866A out, the mercury vapor one, and we'll toss in the 3B25 Xeon filled uh, rectifier here and see if it gives us the same waveform. All right, we've got the 3B25 hooked up. Let's go ahead and flip the power on and hopefully we'll see a very similar waveform up here. Oh, yeah, there we go. That is very cool. The waveform is almost identical looking, although it looks like we might have just a tiny bit more amplitude out of it. It's a bit hard to tell. Uh, it looks like we're almost at a, a full 150 volts on the peak there. Um, so, I don't know, maybe there's less voltage drop across the uh, 3B25 here. Uh, either way, we can see the rectification perfectly. That is very cool. <laughs> so there we go, a quick look at some neat old rectifiers that I had in my collection. Uh, and well, who knows, maybe in the future we'll build something neat with these. But today I just wanted to kind of go over what they were and most importantly look at the beautiful glow that they give off. Particularly the difference in glow between uh, the two different types of gas that are being used in here. Um, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this short look at some old tubes. If you did, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. And if there's any other specific types of tubes that you you would like me to take a look at i'll see if i have them in my collection and we'll make another video uh, so i want to thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next episode